Scorpio, hello and welcome to your reading for the week of, can you believe it? We are in December, December 1st through the 7th of 2024, an eight year. What are we deciding this year, Scorpio? You have a retrograde in your second house. So that leads me to the Work Your Life Oracle guidebook for our first card. Whoa. We have boundaries. What a surprise. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? And we have to see um, around your resources. We'll take the bottom of that too. Birthing a new age. So what boundaries are required of you at this time to birth a new age? The kitty here. Nice little rose crisp cat. And um, my People working with second house matters. This is your um, your senses. So how has what you've believed impacted your senses? And we had a new moon on the first. So to celebrate that, um, or the 30th, just depending on your time zone. We have Aphrodite, romantic love. Aphrodite here has a wing on her shoulder. So she's got like a winged heart. And it feels like. Um, she's able to really keep her mind focused on what she wants to create. So for my Scorpio Sun Moon Risings, um, establishing better boundaries with romantic love will help you to birth a new age. So maybe you have a, a sacred other that you want to make sure that you're um, keeping mind of their boundaries, really respecting them, showing that you care. Um, the week starts out with the sun at technically nine degrees from this new moon. Let's go to the moment of the new moon. It's about 4 a.m. Six a.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Sunday the 1st. So Scorpio, you guys have the Nine of Wands. That would tell me that maybe you've never really held romantic love so closely. And you're seeking a way to approach someone who you love romantically um, in ways that won't burn them out and, you know, get them off the track for their life. That is a quartz. I'm going to leave these actually on my deck. Keep it charged up. Nine of one. So to me, it just looks like this guy has built a bunch of like a fence around himself or um, was leaving parts of himself behind so that in the mind he might have reached a level of emotional fulfillment or alienation and he wanted to keep his emotions from reaching that that point. So he blocked himself off or this is like a scale, um, a skin that he shed. So where do you need like there's two aspects of boundaries first the question of where do you need to establish better boundaries here followed by this nine of wands which is asking and sp spelling out your actual situation challenges you to become more vital and to live life to the fullest Abandon your old fears and fulfill your most important wishes. Activate your senses. That's what we have going on with the sun moving through Sagittarius. Um, learn to recognize outdated habits in love with boundaries. Okay. Dreaming a new world into being. We're going to get a rose oracle for this Aphrodite card. Let's see. The first one of these sun so there might be a leo in your life someone with leo venus leo moon um, stallion perhaps the sun this person for you has a lot of joy enjoyment life force success vitality and play so it's like maybe you have an aphrodite in your life and you're working out the balances retrieving lost parts of yourself scorpio
maybe your heart is opening to an Aphrodite figure where you formerly only had boundaries and it was because of this feeling like you were delusional over something, or someone. Stalking. This card is a symbol of searching of awareness and of intuitive perception. Many things are growing. See the nine wands and changing the autumn scene. Like a hunter stalking his prey or a scout exploring the way. That one kind of comes up for me. You need to be intuitively alert and vigilant. Naturally, this card is not about the actual hunter or scout as a profession. It's a symbol of heightened awareness as a personal way of being. Heightened awareness as a personal way of being. Huh. I like the stocking part. That's very Scorpio. Oh, look at that. We have a lot of amazing energy coming through. Agape, the maiden, and the one. Looks like um, through a Venusian character, Venusian figure, some of you guys will be coming into a romantic love. Right there. Hmm. Scorpio, what's the deal here? Yeah, you can see all that. Cool. The one. It's interesting. The one feels like the one that you, like, love um, amongst, like, God. You know, and it feels like they're a maiden. So you have to un unstick yourself from this story that you, you tell. But it might be convenient to tell about your connection to the maiden, to God, or you're starting to see these things clearly now. Uh-oh, or there's a baby coming. Birth mysteries. What are you being called to create? Scorpio, maybe it's time for you guys to get pregnant. Um, or you're creating something new, new project, new resolutions that you were birthing a new age. Birth mysteries and the one is all like here. And this is what I kind of feel. Where you realize that your heart opening is the way that you can birth the new age. And maybe this Aphrodite is the maiden practicing agape and your your boundaries have been like that. That feels more feng shui. Let's get a sacred symbol and finish reading this nine of wands. Okay, on the one hand, this card shows us the final goal of all searching intuition and awareness are the path, divine feminine. Hmm. The sun, the one, divine feminine. That feels right. That feels right. Let's keep those under wraps and see what the angels have to say. Hmm. Intuition and awareness are the path as well as the destination, the journey, as well as the reward. Sometimes we get lost in the routine and repetition. Maybe the king of air, that nine of wands and boundaries. And then the hermit for birthing new mysteries and birthing a new age. So for people who are having like idea kids, it's important that you have time to hermit. Not everyone needs to have physical children to be fulfilled. But for those of us who do you can birth a child as well all right sometimes we get lost in routine and repetition we fail to perceive the great mystery that's waiting us on the other hand this card encourages us to say bye-bye to the uncivilized life of a semi-barbarian intuition and awareness and meditation retreat Ooh. it feels like this is what is needed as the outcome for this reading. So for my Magdalene people, just know that Mary Magdalene would meditate and be surrounded by a bunch of wolves. They would come and surround her and protect her and keep her in her heightened state. It's not time to approach and intrude on someone's privacy. Give them space. Forward motion is not recommended. Wait, be patient, and things will turn out well. Scorpio, there's your answer. This is speaking to these boundaries and coming out to be brilliant, impartial, professional, diplomatic. This Knight of Wands cards is really speaking to me, so I know I fragmented reading it, but let's go. The card encourages us to say goodbye to the uncivilized life of an, a semi-barbarian. Intuition and awareness serve to overcome certain pri 
primal fears, intuition and awareness serve to overcome primal fears. It's like this is your uh, external. You have the boundaries and the king of air is very confident, but on the inside, this is how you feel, Scorpio. So hermiting and understanding what you're here to birth, which the hermit is said to have this inner child, this baby in his lantern, um, because maybe he's making a star. Maybe he's making um, something that will be radiant and special, the sun and the one. Come on. That's too funny. So the week finishes with Pluto at zero degrees and 13 seconds. I am so stoked for Pluto to move through Aquarius. And I also feel like the timing of everything is very crucial. Like maybe there are certain things that we will understand about ourselves and our presence that we couldn't communicate before after this week. On the 8th of December, the sun will be at 16 degrees and have crossed over, Mer crossed over Mercury retrograde. Crossed over Mercury retrograde. Let's see what Kali has to say. Divine Feminine and Magdalene meditating on the one would also lead to clarity around maybe how you want your king of air to respect you and respect your boundaries, how you would like to be the maiden who is in love with life. And, you know, this king of air does look like he's traveling. So maybe it's important that you express how you want to go forth into the world, maybe together. Uh, maybe you guys need to go take a trip if you're with someone, a group of friends. Kaladar, which I love that she's blue, it gives the hermit. It's like a ladder. Hermit, Kaladar, Magdalene meditating. I do read the reading like this outcome can lead us here let's see what she has to say i'm just gonna pass oh three that's interesting she's got jupiter's number the number three all right i'm gonna sit for this part <laughs> She is not bound by appearances, opinions, or material limitations, divine feminine. Okay. She can bring forth exquisite blessing and glorious manifestation from the sacred expanse of nothingness. Your soul can rely upon her completely. Cast your fears away. Hers is the power of the universe combined with generosity of grace. When hope is lost and a way forward cannot be sensed, Kaladar arises as a reminder of the endless creativity and resourcefulness of divine feminine. Her love will always find a way. That's what the Aphrodite and the maiden, the sun, even the boundaries speak to me about. Prepare yourself by regularly connecting to your heart, the sun, your heart. You see this. This person is actually covering up their chest, it looks like, more than anything. <laughs> Her love will always find a way. If the way does not yet exist, it shall be created. If you cannot see or feel how to move from where you are now to where you want to be. So if you're feeling stuck, you have to connect to your heart. If you're feeling stuck, you also need to take rest and be at peace in your connection with Divine Feminine. So this subtle, slow movement. If inhibiting or obstructing forces are at work, she knows how to use them so that we grow stronger rather than weaker. And when the time is right, annihilates them, thus ceasing their influence over us or our affairs. The Oracle Kaladara marks the ending of a cycle after the full moon when things have gone as far as they can go and the initiation of a fresh cycle following the black or new moon when what has fallen away shall rise again in revised form. So this is a what happened to you last year kind of thing and how has that come full circle? Like pull up emails, pull up pictures, pull up Instagram posts, social media um, presence. You, what were you talking about on YouTube like that you can look at this year because that is exactly... The progression, the direct line of progression. Our beloved Kali Kaladara, cosmic lunar priestess, is Bharavati, she who controls the changes taking place in the universe and our lives. We can trust her timing and our own processes. Say with me, I trust divine timing. Type it in the comments, write it in your journal, get it on paper so you can see it, and then start to believe it, work on believing it. We could trust her timing and our own processes. Stay true to your own inner work and know that your efforts shall bear fruit. Okay. 
Magdalene meditating also. It just feels like understanding that you can visualize the whole row of the Hermit Birth Mysteries and Birthing a New Age. Here you can start to visualize these things. You can also visualize um, the Nine of Wands, the King of Air, and the Boundaries card. It feels like that is something that's practical, something that um, will keep people from accessing parts of you that are your heart, the Divine Feminine card, the One from Kim Grams. We have Wa. So you're going on a journey, maybe to regain the sense of balance or to show the world who you are. Maybe you've become Aphrodite, uh, tuned into your feelings, and you have amazing feelings for the divine. And you are also the maiden. Shouts out to that card. We need to look at this very sensual depiction. The maiden archetype is the epitome of innocent arousal, naive sensuality, and precarious purity. She's compelling and addictive. Because of her flawless and youthful glow, she's the first archetype in the trifecta of maiden mother crone, and rightfully so because she has oh so much to learn. The maiden is perfectly positioned for trouble to come her way and subject her to a challenge that leads to the next phase of womanhood. She must grow up yet hesitates at the threshold, enamored by the charms of youth. The maiden represents the side of us that is riveted and curious, drawn to shadowy forests, dark nights, and talking, taking just one taste of poisonous fruit or the apple. Her magic is edgy and includes both shame and delight. Let yourself fall down the rabbit hole, young one. Persephone, Alice, or any princess figure. So I want to look at Venus and her transit next week. Oh, she's crossing over Pluto. Oh my gosh, Scorpio. So your, your planet is getting a Venusian energy. That's what's happening. Let's draw one from the Mother Peace um, Tarot for this to close out your reading. My first aerially shot with crystals <laughs> reading. Um, to access me, I make one minute summaries on TikTok, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, North Node, and on Instagram, every two and a half days, I try and get as close to the moon's phase as possible with um, my own writing, my contribution to what I dream to one day evoke. So that's been said. It's been put on the record as a writing astrologer. Okay, well, your card fell, so we're going to pick it up. That's what we're going to do. It jumped out. Ten of Cups! Looks like someone is absolutely on a journey towards emotional joy with either, boy, with either this figure or someone like them, maybe as this figure, because you're the magician. Magician feels like an age of Aquarius type. It's like an archetype that we just have to recognize. We can dabble with this by like playing chess, getting into Sherlock Holmes, um, going and watching people play chess, any sort of like strategic warfare um, is good for age of Aquarius theme. So we want to be emotionally grounded with Uranus and Taurus. And make sure that we stay on the side of our heart. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, all of my aloha.